Welcome! In this tutorial I talk about the new multi-instance feature in Maxon Cinema 4D Release 20. In this great example by the talented artist Tim Clapham, you see how useful this new feature is in scenes with a high polygon count. Tim is an industry recognized expert in Cinema 4D and a creative director at Lux TV. He worked with a wide range of global advertising agencies and broadcast networks. If you want to know more about Tim and his work, visit his website, Lux TV. Before we dive into the tutorial, I want to make a brief introduction of myself. My name is Helge Maus and I'm a Maxon Certified Lead Instructor. I work now since 18 years in the industry as a 3D and visual effects trainer for my company, Pixel Train. You find more information about me and my trainings on pixeltrain.de. So let's get started. One of the incredible new features inside of Cinema 4D R20 are the multi-instances. Multi-instances solve a problem that I as a 3D or visual effects artist always have. The polygon count goes through the roof. If you make photorealistic environments, forests, foliage or big scenes, you have today a really big amount of objects and the polygon count goes always through the roof. Rendering scenes like that on a normal machine is really, really complicated and time consuming. And if you want to iterate really fast in your scene, you really have to have a beefy machine. So multi instances solve this. And multi instances are also fully integrated in ProRender, which means I can use ProRender also as a previous tool. In this scene here by Tim, you see a little patch of moss and he used the cloner system here to clone around polygon objects for different kind of hairy or mossy stuff here. He used a multi-instance approach. You see that in the instance mode here and through this mode it was possible to really art direct the whole scene without any clutter. To see the final result I've opened this here in the picture viewer for you you see it really looks dense and it's a whole world here in this moss going on. To learn now more about multi instances and how you use them, I prepared a simpler scene. So we will build a forest and so I switch now over to my forest scene by pressing the V key and switch here to my forest scene. And this scene is really simple. You have an HDRI sky, you have a landscape here. And I have configured ProRender so that we can render this instantly here. You see nothing fancy is going on. It's only a plane here, a landscape. I want now to plant some trees on it. And I've prepared a Laubwerk tree outside. So I want to merge it into my scene. I go here to File, Merge Objects and I can search here for my tree. And I bring it into my scene. If you zoom onto this tree, you will see that the polygon count of this tree is really big. You can check this by hitting Ctrl I on your keyboard and you see we have around 420,000 polygons in one of these trees. So this is a big amount of polygons. If we now want to start planting these trees here, MoGraph is the best solution. So take a MoGraph cloner here and we switch the cloner here to object mode. We place our landscape here and we can also deactivate line clones. Otherwise all our trees will look into Z direction which means that they lie here on the ground later. And now you can, before you drag your tree under the cloner, you can change now the instance mode if you like to render instances or multi instances. But I want to demonstrate to you how these modes work. So I go into the instance mode, the classic one, and we place our tree under the cloner. It takes now a while because this cloner now is placing 20 trees here on the surface and you can understand this system like a copy. The whole tree is copied around and so the polygon count increases a lot for the render engine. And if you now start ProRender, ProRender has to hold all the trees in memory. And this takes time and can end in or out of memory. And here we are. You see, we have reached the limit 
off your video memory. Okay, that's not working. But if we now go here to the cloner and change the mode here to render instances, you will see that now ProRender updates its scene and now suddenly it's able to render 20 trees here in my scene. Great. But what if I need more of these trees? So I stop ProRender again and I want to have, for example, now 150 trees. If you do that, you will now see that it takes some time and you will see also if you navigate now that the navigation is still fast, that's great, but it's a little bit slower than before. And what happens if we now want to have 500 trees? Now my viewport is extremely slow. So working in such a setup is not possible for me. It still renders. Thanks to the clever programmers of ProRender, but yeah, like you've seen, working in this mode is not possible. And at this point, the new multi instances of Cinema 4D R20 come into play. If you switch now here to multi instances, you will see that after a short while, the viewport navigation is much faster. The reason for this is that multi instances host the whole thing in one big mesh. And that's the reason why it's much faster. On the other side, we have some caveats or disadvantages with this system. We had some limits in the render instances. For example, we were not able to deform, for example, or we are not able to have different animation states inside of render instances. But in the multi instances, we also lose the ability to work with dynamics at this point. But on the other hand, we have now a faster viewport and we have these great viewport modes. If I now come into this scene and I want to shape now my forest a little bit, for example, I want to tell the system where I want to have trees and, for example, I want to have here some space for a road or something like that, I can now switch my viewport mode here from object to, for example, bounding boxes and suddenly I can navigate extremely fast and this works for every cloner. If you have more than one cloner, for example, you have different species of trees or different kind of objects placed in your scene, you can decide for every of these cloners if you want to work, for example, in the bounding box mode or you also can switch to much faster modes. One of them is matrix. So you get these little cubes, which you know from the MoCraft matrix and you also can switch here to the points mode. And if you want to get rid of all this stuff, you can switch it here completely off. Really useful. I switch back to points here and I want also to increase here the amount to 1000 trees. It doesn't take time because we only see the points. But in the moment you switch on now the pro renderer, these multi instances now are generated. It's one single object and you see nearly instantly the result in ProRender. Isn't this cool? Okay, but we want to build now our path. So I go here to the top and because it's MoGraph, I can work now with the MoGraph selection. So select the MoGraph cloner. I go here to MoGraph and here we have the MoGraph selection tool. It looks like the normal live selection tool but it's for MoGraph and it works with a brush, with a radius. You can change the radius here and then we select here these points here which represent here the trees later. Okay. And I hold down now my shift key because I want to clean here this area also. And after I've done that, we have now here our MoGraph selection tag. If you want, you can select this here and name it. For example, this is our path for later. And then we can have the selection is still on. Go here to MoGraph and we select here hide selected. What now happens is we get a plane effector here and inside of the plane effector, 
under parameters here the visibility flag is now ticked which means that these clones here are not visible and the clones which are now switched are the clones which are in my selection path. Now we can go back to our cloner and switch back here to for example the bounding boxes and now you see that you have now builded a path here. If you want to change something later for example you can always go back. You only have to double click for example here on this tag so the selection is loaded again and also the MoGraph selection tool and then you can hold down the shift key for example to bring more points into that and now you see these boxes are in my way so select the cloner again go back to the points and now we can select some points more here and you can get rid of points with hold down of your control key so for example you say I don't want to have the path on this side here I only want to have it on this side here okay that's it and so we switch now back to the cloner and we can show now the objects in the viewport again. This will take some while but you see it's still fast because it's multi instances and you see how easily you can now work with this system here also in scenes where you have a whole bunch of geometry going on. Let's switch on ProRender again. And here you are, you have an amazingly dense forest and it's extremely fast to work with. Beside the work with multi instances inside of the MoGraph cloner generator, you also have now multi instances inside of the standard instance object. To work with this, it's really similar than before. There's only one thing you have to keep in mind you need point sources. Let me demonstrate this. You select your object like before which you want to instantiate and then you go here to your instance object and there it is. You see an instance of your tree. If you look into the instance object itself you see it referenced this tree here and the instance mode is instance. Like before you have the render instances same like before and now you have the new multi instances. But if you select this now, you see the tree vanishes. The reason for this is that you now need a position source here. A position source inside of Cinema 3D can be now a particle system, for example, a particle, or you can also use a thinking particle group, so also a position object, and you can use the MoGraph matrices. So in my case I use the MoGraph matrix. I go here, say I want to have a matrix object. I switch it here for example back to object mode. We use our landscape again. I don't want to align these clones. And if you now look here and I increase the count, you now see here on my landscape these little cubes which represent the positions of the matrices. If you now want to place your trees onto these matrices, you can now use your instance object here. You only have to place here the matrix inside of this position source. And there you are. Now you have all the viewport mode options, like in the cloner. You can switch here from object mode to matrix, bounding box, or you can switch here to points mode if you like, and you work exactly in the same manner. That's it about multi instances inside of Cinema 4D R20. I hope you like it. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. Have fun.